Good afternoon. I am here at Cauliflower's Ventura, California. My name is Chelsea Mulligan. I am also known as the Dispensary Whisperer. We are doing interviews for Respect My Region today. I have Jeff Levers from Beard Bros. He is one of two beard. And Jeff, please introduce yourself and tell me a little bit about yourself. Oh, as Chelsea said, I'm Jeff, one half of Beard Bros. On uh, IG, I am the Bearded Hefe. Um, and Bill and I are actual brothers. Uh, I don't know where, where are we really want to start. There's a lot of ways that topics about Beard Bros we've been to skip. Let's talk about your journey from the beginning and like how you got to where you are, why you are there, all of those things. Well, to take it back to the beginning, we, we started out as East Coast growers, which, as everybody knows, you, you hid. We did not put your name, your face on logos, and we're not at events, at, at, at these types of things. But we didn't work to have that be the lifestyle of constantly looking over our shoulder and wondering when this might be a day we're going to jail. Um, so that's what that's what precipitated our brand move, or our, our, our brothers to move to the West Coast and actually form a brand. Uh, a quick stopover in Colorado led us to California. Uh, we, we've been cultivators in, in California from 11 to 18. We immersed ourselves in the in the culture, and the culture back then was much more of a, a caregiver style, where everybody was really medical focused, everybody was community focused, and the corporatization of cannabis has kind of lost some of that feel. So it's nice to come out to an event like this at Hall of Flowers, where they're they're kind of bringing that feel back, and they're they're highlighting the right people doing the right things, and and, and bringing that community feel back to this. I love that you touched on community. Let's talk about Beard Bros and how you integrated into the community when you came to LA and like the evolution of that. Because um, the little bit that I know, you have done so incredibly much from edibles to growing flower to moving into media to RSO. So can we talk about a little bit of how you've influenced both LA culture, but also weed culture and how that's also influenced you? Yeah, I was, I was going to say, it definitely was us being influenced by L.A. culture to begin. You know, coming, as I said, coming from the East Coast, all this stuff was in hiding. Going to our first sesh where I mean, pounds were out in turkey bags on, on tables and everybody was just freely consuming was definitely an eye-opening experience for us. But it's also what builds that sense of community. Everybody's going to the same events on a Thursday night, a Friday night, a Saturday night. And you know, they might be in completely different areas of Los Angeles. So you just naturally built your network out and there's a trusted system. And then... When legalization came along, everybody kind of was scrambling to find their path along it, us included. And we kind of, our, our, our path into, away from cultivation, away from the, the products and the brain purpose into media, was that we were educating ourselves on the process to try to navigate through it in an undercapitalized situation. You, you needed to find the loopholes, the, the things that were going to allow you an advantage over somebody that was coming in with millions of dollars. And we, we started to disseminate that information from elsewhere and from, from the clickbait style of articles that there were back then. And we became somewhat of a trusted voice for information we were looking for ourselves, but trying to help our friends. And it, it spawned from our local group there to do talking about SoCal, to talking about California, to then ourselves as a brand looking to, to go into other states with products and then starting to explore that market and realizing the pain points that that market has and talking to the operators there and trying to be the ones putting forth the right information. Like the number of times at events like this, we have people come up to us and say, you know, a particular article or a particular take you guys on, have on something saved us tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars because we were going to make a decision at, and we didn't understand the ramifications of that decision. So to me, that's what all this spawns from is, is sharing of knowledge, sharing of information, sharing of everybody scaling up is what this was meant to be. And the way they did legalization tried to fragment that all away and, and make it so it was the strongest thing we had they tried to bring. But I all agree, Paul. Um, tell me what your favorite thing about Hall of Flowers is. Um, Besides the fact that they brought all the community together and everything you said already. Tr truly, it is the people. It, it, this is the, the one event each year that as we run the gamut from the culture all the way through to the English side, this is the one event we come to and we see people from all spectrums of that. Even people that aren't in the legal market will come here to see where is there potentially an opportunity for them to get docked into the legal market. And this is where I think the culture wants to announce those things. Like, for example, we did, we put out an article yesterday announcing originals and nameless merging together to SoCal powerhouse brands that are coming together, realizing they're stronger together and, and the things they can do together are way bigger than they could do apart. 
And it's, it, to me, it's a deviation from what we would normally see. Normally, you'd see a, a capitalized private equity fund invest into a brand, but you're seeing two brands that have been able to sustain themselves that are now combining forces. And I think that's going to be the trend you're going to see for this year and the next two is the, the, the operators that really know how to do things, realizing it isn't with the equity money I need to to batch it. I need to have like-minded people with same goals as I have within an organization together where we can work towards that common goals to build. Last question. <laughs> what are you most looking forward to in 2024 as we expand Beard Bros, not only nationally, but internationally? I, I keep cycling back to you, but truly to Pete. <laughs> and as much as my, and you know this, we've known you for years, as much of an introvert as I am, I love getting out into these new markets and talking to people, whether they're, they're current markets with us, whether they feel like they're a couple of years behind and even a decade behind, just be it cycling from people, the, the mindsets they have, the new paths that you might hear about from them in a new state that, that something in California isn't implementing and finding out another state is doing it better and being able to come back and be like, hey guys, we should take risks from you. One example is Washington State just absolved the medical, t- the, the excise tax for all their medical patients. I'd love to see California in that. They I need to. California was built on the medical model and it's just been kind of thrown to the wayside. And people like us that have been trying to help the less fortunate, the people that really need this as a medicine, don't have a path to do that at the scale that it's needed. So, to name in other states, seeing other things, the any fresh thing because we end up in an echo chamber, in a little bubble, if you stay out in the particular area you are. So, experiencing that and, and getting, it kind of refills your tank when you get around younger people or people that are only in the first six months or a year of the industry and kind of haven't gone all the road, acid downs and the roadblocks and all these things. When we worked together in Arizona, there was a lot of things we saw in Arizona, but we wanted California to re-implement, like deli style in this country, be able to smell the wean before you buy it, be able to know. Like, that's one of the biggest things I think about this event, circling back this around as well, is you're being given the product. You can literally walk outside in the Atlanta right. area, try it and go, wow, we need that on our menu, and walk back into that breed and go, how much of this can I get from them? And it, and it closes that. It makes you aren't traveling the distance of three states. Potentially, if you're in L.A. trying to come up to the Bay to, to try to make those relationships. Or waiting for them to go home and try the sample and then get back to you via email instead of just being here on site and being able to get it all done in one fell. See, this, this brings everything and everybody together to, to make every more effective, more efficient, which is what we really need. We need people healthy notes. We have enough people trying to take pieces of the pie from us. That's oh, so wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing today and taking time out of your day to meet, like chat with us. Option. Um, again, this is Chelsea Mulligan for Respect Play Region, Jeff Levers from Beard Bros, and thank you so much.